Hey, what's up everybody? It's Matt from Rocky's War Room. And today I have another Let's Build video for the game Beyond the Gates of Antares. This time it's the character Privateer Admiral Taurus Kilman. This is a character, a new new model for the Beyond the Gates of Antares, coming out here pretty soon. Or is that already? And let's take a look at him. So this is him. That's the Privateer Admiral. It's pretty awesome looking. Taurus. Uh, he's a kind of a, he's, he's a funny character. I actually like his, uh, his character. He, uh, he's a pretty scrappy dude that <laughs> is made friends with the Boromites. Um, he's friends with a lot of the Boromites and, uh, that's how he gets work and jobs and stuff like that. He's a bit of a scavenger. And uh, this guy can take all kinds of different toys with him. Uh, he can have up to two gun drones. He can have uh, batter drones. Uh, they get impact cloaks. He, cloaks. he can have. He has two bodyguards with electro lashes, um, but they can be upgraded to a boromite bodyguard, which is pretty cool. Um, you can upgrade his unit. That's what comes with this kit here. And now uh, we have a female bodyguard, I'm assuming, with a plasma carbine. And there's the arm holding the gun. The other end, there's the hand. Um, the way it comes in, it's a pretty simple kit. Uh, looks like you got some weapons options for the drone. The drones, here's the drones right here. Uh, I'm assuming, yeah, there's a couple that have arms. There's actually three options with three arms down here. So there's a lot of things that you can add to this unit, um, uh, especially like the gun drones. Uh, the gun drone, you can actually add up to two gun drones um, pretty cheaply, <laughs> plus a, bat a batter drone, shield drones, that sort of thing to this unit. All in all, it's a really awesome looking uh, freeborn unit. Um, <clears throat> And uh, we're going to put it together and we're going to paint it in its entirety, all three characters and the drones. Um, so first I'm going to show you the tools I'm going to use. This should be a pretty simple kit to, to put together. Uh, and then, of course, I will tell you how I painted it. So uh, we'll be back in a minute to take a look at what they look like.
right, there you have it. Uh, there is Taurus and his two bodyguards. And you got your drones. And uh, <clears throat> since I figured he'd be, he's a pretty scrappy guy and he's into scrapping things and scavenging and things like that. I took the, uh, the batter drone that comes with the kit and I had two guns for, for gun drones and I have one gun drone here and I had a batter drone body and I figured it'd be pretty awesome to scrap the two together to make a second gun drone since he is allowed to do that. Um, he had a, a batter drone that got a little destroyed and he just put a gun on it. I think that's pretty cool. Um, very unique piece to put with him and you can clearly see that it is a gun drone and uh, of course we got a medi drone so uh you got your three guys it wasn't very it wasn't hard at all to put the, her arm on um i think the hardest part of this whole thing is uh the drones and putting their arms on and stuff like that uh do one arm at a time i'd, I'd recommend uh gluing him to the uh, flight stand first if you can if you don't or to a toothpick or whatever you're going to use to paint it on. Uh, I'm just going to put tape around the, uh, the little clear flight stand and, uh, before I paint them and stuff like that. So, <clears throat> but, uh, but, uh, yeah, so that, that's the hardest part of this whole entire kit. Um, it's not really hard. It's all one piece for the Boromite bodyguard. It's all one piece for Taurus and it's two pieces for the, uh, the, the female bodyguard. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint these up. Uh, I usually do these in multiple videos, uh, but I'm going to do this all in one video this time. So uh, I'll be right back to show you guys the first color we're going to use, uh, which will be obviously the primer. All right. We're going to start with our first color, which is the primer. It's Vallejo black primer. I usually get it in a large bottle, it lasts forever. And I put the figurine on a stand and just started painting it uh, with the brush, the black. Um, I do recommend doing it with an airbrush. It's probably a heck of a lot easier and smoother um, and it dries a lot faster. But uh, this time I just decided to, uh, to paint the primer on, which is no big deal. It still does the same thing, dries, thins real nice. That's why I prefer the Vallejo paintable primer over the um, spray primer most of the time. You can control it and you don't have to worry about overspray or anything like that. So our first color we're going to use is uh, this. Uh, we're going to be painting the skin. So we're going to be using Foundry African Flesh Shade 126A. And you don't need a lot of water in this, just a little bit to smooth it out. And we are going to go with a dark skin on Taurus. And uh, we're just going to be doing the base coats right now with this 126A shade color. And get the hand, the arm, get his face. And remember, on the top of it ha his head, he has some um, electronical um, nodes and goggles and stuff like that. They're going to be painting black later. Um, so you can avoid these if you'd like. If not, no big deal. You can go right over the top of them uh, on the very top of his head. So remember, it's just the base coat. Um, you know, do two even thin coats of the, uh, the base coat on it. I usually do two thin coats for the smoothest, uh, thinnest application of the base coat. And once all that's all done, this is what it looks like. Uh, then we're going to move on to the next uh, shade, which is going to be 126B and 126A, the Foundry African Flesh. We're going to mix those two together, 50-50, with about uh, close to 25 to 35 percent water. Uh, you could actually move on to 126B without having to do this step of mixing them together. Uh, but I wanted to do some layering and some blending uh, with the skin tone. So make it look more fluid. Uh, so if you don't want to do this part, you don't have to, but, uh, I would recommend it if you want nice layers, which are thin, um, over the top and they blend all well together and the colors are very, they're, they're more opaque on top of each other. It's a little bit smoother transition. 
I know a lot of people that do the layering where they'll do three colors and they won't do any mid shades where they're mixing the shades together. Uh, but this here is a five, I believe it's a five step uh, layering process. Each time we're adding a little bit more water than we did with the previous uh, color that we were using. And the idea is to get two or three thin watered down coats. Um, I'd recommend using distilled water for this process or some sort of um, thinner medium, acrylic thinner medium. Uh, here I just used some distilled water uh, and I did about 50% paint to 50% water um, on the uh, second and third steps. So now we're going to just use straight 126B and we're just we're going to be avoiding underneath the arm, um, underneath the chin and the bottoms of the arms and the armpit. Well, we don't have an armpit here, but and you would just want to leave the crevices. You just want to get the topmost parts um, of the figure, uh, leaving the recesses alone. Um, tops of the ears, around the ears, like the inner ear, you leave that alone with this color. You get the cheekbones, the uh, bottom of the mouth, the tip of the nose. And as you're doing these layers, you're you're hitting less and less uh, of the crevices. You're just getting smaller and smaller, and it's a gradual buildup. And you want to do, you know, two very thin coats. Uh, so now at this point, we're at about 50% water to 50% paint. So our next layer is going to be a combination of 126B and 126C. Uh, like I said, this is a five-step process. Um, and you're still using that 50%, 50%, 50% to 50% water, making it really thin. You don't want a ton on your brush because you're going to be doing, remember, you're going to be doing two thin coats um, on his skin itself. And keep in mind, you're using the topmost, or you're painting the topmost layers uh, of the skin. You're not going over, you're going over the marks you've already made with the previous color, but you're also getting the very high, high points at this point. Um, you're doing using less and less paint um, on the topmost part of the skin. And I always start with the skin for most of my models. Um, the reason being is the innermost part of the miniature itself. So as you can see here, we're almost done. We're really close. The last thing to do is use the African Light Flesh uh, 126C just by itself, 50-50 uh, water to paint. Very thin layers. All you're doing is really is just hitting the tip of the nose, the tip of the cheekbones, the top of the head, and the tops of the fingers and the top of the arm in certain places where the most light hits the skin itself. Um, that's the best place to put it. That way it pops out. Um, it's not overwhelming and you get a little bit of skin variation and, or, or some skin color variation. Okay, now that we got our skin color completely finished, all highlighted up, we're going to work on the hard part of the miniature. Probably the hardest thing for me to do, the teeth. And we're just going to take some uh, ash gray by Army Painter to accomplish this. <laughs> take the smallest brush you got, be as neat as you possibly can. And as you can see, it's a little blurry, but uh, just... Take a few practice wipes before you actually hit the teeth because I actually screwed it up a little bit and had to go over it with the skin tone after I was finished. It's okay. We all make those mistakes. <laughs> you just got to fix them. It happens all the time. As you can see, he looks a little buck tooth right there. But uh, in the end, I fixed this. But uh, there you go. And there you go with the completed teeth, the skin. It's looking good. So we're going to take our next color, which is German Camouflage Dark Green by Vallejo Model Color Panzer Series. Uh, we're going to paint his 
uh, not his armor, but his uh, clothing um, or his uniform, uh, whatever you want to call it. And all we're doing is a really simple base coat. You just need a little bit of water, probably 25% water to paint to get a nice thin base coat. Um, you want to do, you know, two thin coats as best as po best as you possibly can. Thin coats um, of this this dark camouflage green. It works, uh, and just go look for, look at the box art if you have any questions or the Warlord Studio art uh, on what to paint this green color. And as you can see from here, you can pause it and you can see what I painted green, and we got a nice even thin coat. So then we're going to take the German camouflage dark green and Russian uniform World War II green. We're going to mix those two together, 50% water to 50% paint. Again, what we're doing is just like the skin, we are layering this color up. We're going to leave the underneath of the arm, the underneath of the legs, anywhere where the, the, the light does not hit. Uh, we're going to leave alone starting from now on with our layering. So... I usually like to start in an arm or one side of the miniature, work my way to the other side and then down. Um, I think I just jumped around here a little bit, but you kind of get the idea, uh, leaving the crevices alone. Um, we're not using a wash on this. Uh, and as you can see, it's already starting to pop out at you. Um, you're starting to see the green uniform bits. And now we're gonna, just going to take our German camouflage green and our Russian uniform mix. And we're just going to add a little bit more Russian green to it, uh, Russian uniform green to the German camouflage green that we are, that mix we already have with a little bit more water. Uh, as you can see uh, off to the right there, we're just, we're just adding a little bit more. Um, this is going to be the top most parts. We're going to be layering it. Um, as you can see, it's a little bit of more of a kind of like a tan green or a green brown, um, look to it and we're just slowly building up the colors and we're we're go we're painting less and less as we go on uh, with our layering and as you can see it popped out even more you can really see the definition from the crevices so now we're just going to take straight Russian uniform green and we're gonna paint the same exact spots except less <laughs> less is more <laughs> And we're just going to pop these color out, colors out even more on this uniform. So as you can see, I'm not going over the same spots I've are I'm going over the same spots that I already am, but I'm not painting as much uh, of the surface area as I was previously. And just get the tops. And at this point, you're just hitting the spots where the light hits the uniform, and you'll see it really pop out after this as well. Now we're seeing more of that uniform. It's got depth. It's got layers. It's starting to really pop out at you and say, holy smokes. Uh, so we're going to mix that Russian uniform World War II with middle stone, which is a, a kind of like a desert green brown. And we're going to mix those two together, 50-50%, with 50% water to paint. As you can see, it's real thin. You don't want a ton on your brush. And you just want to get... Um, the tips uh, of the uniform, the spaces where it's going to see the absolute most light uh, reflect off of it or being shown on it. And as you can see, it's really coming together. It's really popping out at you and it's complete. So we're going to move on to the armor now, which is a violet color, uh, a purple, a dark purple uh, model color violet. Now we're going to do a little bit of water, probably 25% water to paint and we're going to do a two thin base coats of our violet color on all the armor parts and if you're unsure which is purple or what to paint you can look at the studio art that uh, Warlord Games has provided and they have wonderful pictures that show you where all the armor that they have purple uh, in their picture so there you have it the gloves the boots the uh, the belt around the belt um, all of that is painted the base coat, and we're going to just kind of take a purple tone wash uh, from Army Painter. And we're not watering this down. We're using it at full strength because we want to really deepen those, uh, darken those crevices, kind of blend it together, and uh, just, just make it look a little bit more worn. 
So now that that is done, as you can see, it changes the tone of the actual armor itself a little bit. We're going to take our Gene Stealer uh, Purple by Citadel. Um, there's equivalents in model color um, to the Gene Stealer Purple. If you don't have it from Citadel, uh, you can find an equivalent. Uh, there's lots of them out there. And all we're going to do is some edge highlighting um, on the purple parts where the light's hitting it um, on the edges and things like that. And as you can see, it's all edge highlighted and it's starting to really pop out at you. Just like our uniform, we're going to take Slanesh Gray, which is a very bright or light pastelish looking purple. And we're only going on the we're putting it on the highest parts, the ones that the parts that catch the light. We're lining again with our small brush, and we're just getting those those spots on his armor that uh, really catch the most light from above. And we're going to go across all the whole miniature where we lined before with our jean still or purple uh, with this slanesh gray. And once that is finished, we will move on. To the next step it's looking good starting to really come together and we're going to use beige so now we're going to paint all the straps uh, the cross straps on his back uh, the straps around his legs and uh, his belt around his waist um, we're just base coating with the beige be very careful uh, find yourself a brush that's nice and has a nice point uh, so you don't uh, get it on the uh, nice green that we have there and uh uh, if you're unsure which straps are this color, you can look at the studio art once again, and it'll show you all the straps that are in the studio art and uh, the, uh, what color they, well, the color of the straps that are this color, this base coat. And we, once again, we're using a 25 to percent water to paint for our base coat. And once that's finished, it's starting to really come together. The colors are blending nicely. Uh, we're going to move on to our next step, which is putting the uh, the beige and the pale sand together and creating a 50-50 mix of uh, beige to pale sand with 50% water. And uh, we're just edge highlighting here. Just very little paint on your brush. And you only really want to touch the spots that uh, um, the light catches um, on the straps. You know how straps are worn. You can um, decipher where the worn bits are. Also, the studio art, studio art has spots where they touch it with their paint as well. If you uh, are unsure, uh, you can look at the studio art's picture to find out where they highlighted the straps itself. And it's, it's a really easy process to do. It doesn't take a lot of time. Once again, what you can do here before you do your highlight here, uh, you can take a soft tone wash um, and mix it with some water, about 50%, and do a very light wash over the straps um, to kind of tone that beige down to a look of a little bit of a brown. Um, it gives you a, a little bit of a pre-shade. It's not too stark um, when you're putting it on. Um, that's what I did here. I forgot to show that part. Sorry about that. <laughs> but uh, just do a 50-50 mix of your soft tone ink with water and put it over the beige before you start doing this highlight here. So there you go. There's with the first highlight. Then we're going to take our pale sand. Um, and with our pale sand, we're going to do just the spots that hit the light. And this is just going to be very little. It's not going to be a ton. It's going to be at the corners and the edges of the straps where I've already painted. Um, what this is doing here is just adding another layer of, of warmness to those straps and uh, kind of blending those colors together. And as you can see with the soft tone wash, the darker parts are where the darker parts need to be and the light parts are where the light parts need to be. And that soft tone 50-50 mix that you put over the beige... Um, it's, it's a 50, 50, 50 water to 50% soft tone. And it's just a light. It's just enough to give it that kind of brownish yellow color uh, to your straps. 
All right. So layering up the gloves, it's pretty easy. Just paint less and less as you work your way up to that pale sand. So there you go. That's what it looks like so far. Uh, and that's the end of part one, uh, where we did the uniform and all our base coats of our hardest part. All that's left is the detail on him. You do the same exact work on his, uh, one of his, his female bodyguard and follow these same steps for her. And you should get these same results. Just go look at the studio art and you'll find exactly what's green, what's purple, and what's beige and tan on her and her skin tones. And you should be able to figure it out based on those pictures. So thank you for sticking with me. That's all I've got for this part one. Um, we're going to do our details in part two. I really appreciate it, you sticking with me, and I can't wait to see you guys in that part two. We're going to work on our Bormite skin. I'm going to show you how to paint his skin. And we're going to paint some drones, and we're going to paint all the details that are left on Taurus and the female bodyguard, and also the Bormite, and also those uh, drones. So if you haven't subscribed, please do. Please tell a friend. Please spread the word. I'd really appreciate it. And last but not least, from me to you. Ta-ta, and we'll catch you in part two.